live from the Washington, D.C. area. It's the Inside Scoop, all the news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's the host. Good evening, and welcome to the Inside Scoop. I am your host, Melissa Bachelor Murphy, and tonight we're going to be doing a healthcare series. Our topic tonight is volunteering and how it's good for the heart. And we're here to talk with the Fairfax Area Agency on Aging. And Sharon Lynn is here with me in the studio. And she is a director of the Fairfax Area Agency on Aging. So thank you very much for being with us today. You're very welcome, glad and to be here. Great. And so you guys are doing a lot of exciting things um, around the, the county and around the area. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can just kind of explain to viewers who maybe who haven't heard of what an area agency on aging does, kind of how they came to be and how they serve the community. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to me that people don't know the name the Area Agency on Aging, but it, it, it does happen that way. The uh, Area Agency on Aging was started with, by the Older Americans Act back in the 60s. So it established an, an age, a state aging unit for every state in the union. And then within each state, there are local area agencies on aging. Uh, sometimes they're nonprofits, sometimes they're part of government. And here in Northern Virginia, all of the area agencies are part of government. But the rest of the state, they are all nonprofits. There are 25 area agencies on aging in the state of Virginia. And the purpose of each area agency on aging primarily is to be a focal point for aging services in the community. So it's the place to call, to go to, to find out about the services that are available for older adults and adults with disabilities and caregivers. Um, it's also very much involved in looking at trends in the community, looking uh, forward into the future, and uh, looking at what's needed in the community to help in planning. And so the Fairfax Area Agency on Aging is very involved in doing that with the Board of Supervisors. And as a matter of fact, a few years ago, back around 2005, there was a demographic study done that was the first real strong indicator of how the number of older adults in the community will be growing substantially, mm -hmm. not only in Fairfax County, but across the country. And so at that point we started to plan and the Area Agency on Aging staff uh, work with the Board of Supervisors and our Commission on Aging, which is a, a body of people appointed, individuals appointed by each supervisor in Fairfax County to represent and advocate for older adults. So they were very involved in the planning and the Board of Supervisors and we've had uh, two uh, 50 plus action plans. Uh, since 2005, one in 2007, and then again in 2014. But going back to the purpose and mission of the Area Agency on Aging, we administer uh, programs that are funded through the federal government for older Amer with the older, older Americans Act money. And that's programs like Meals on Wheels, like funding our intake unit where we uh, take calls and counsel the public about the services that are available. Uh, other programs we have like volunteer programs and our Virginia Insurance Counseling and Advocacy Program, Assistance Program, uh, all kinds of programs that we have. So a lot of our funding is federal, some of it is state, and then we also have local funding. And let me say too that our agency covers not just Fairfax County but also the cities of Fairfax and the city of Falls Church. So we, okay. we have contracts with the cities to provide services to them. So there are lots of services that we provide. But most important is to get information out to the public about what the services are in the community, whether they're uh, from the government or from, their, they're from nonprofits or from, from profit organizations as well. So we are the focal point for all those services. So people can call us through our Aging, Disability, and Caregiver Resources line, talk to a very experienced social worker, tell them their situation about their family, their spouse, their neighbor or friend and what's going on, and then get um, information about the services that might be available to them that might be helpful. So that's a wonderful service. But we also do presentations in the community. We have speakers that will go out to community groups and churches and talk. We have our Golden Gazette newspaper, which comes out monthly. 
-hmm. and uh, people love the Golden Gazette. It's a free newspaper focused entirely on interesting topics for older adults and very relevant, up-to-date information of things that they need to know about. So that's a, a wonderful um, service that we offer. And then we also have newsletters that go out. We have a caregiver corner online, which is for caregivers, and to tell them about uh, in-services, trainings, information that's available in the community, things that are going on even nationally that might be of interest to them. And we also have the Ombudsman Program, which so, is a... So define that, because that's a yes. word that's common in my world, but the public may not know what that word means. Yes, so. it's the Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program. And Ombudsman Program advocates for people who are residents of assisted living or nursing centers, or they're receiving care as uh, from a home care agency. So that's the agency you can go to when you're interested in deciding which facility you might be interested in. If you've got a spouse or a family member that, that needs to go for rehab or going for um, to live in an assisted living or, or to nursing home. So you can get lots of good information from them. But it's also the place to go when you have a loved one in a facility and there's a problem that, that doesn't seem mm -hmm. to be resolved. And they can actually go in, get the staff together, uh, get everyone together, including the patient, the resident there, and resolve the problem. And when they do that, that's public information. So if you're looking to compare two facilities, like two assisted living facilities, or three, and you call the Ombudsman Program and find out that assisted living facility number one, had, uh, or the first one, had a problem with the laundry, and the second one maybe had a complaint about the food, but the third one had abuse and neglect allegations, that's very important information for you when making a choice. So it's a wonderful program, and they have over 60 volunteers that work with them to volunteer and visit facilities on a regular basis and get to know the residents and advocate for them when there's minor problems that they can help with. So we are actually the, we house in Fairfax the regional program. So it covers Alexandria, Arlington, Loudoun County, as well as Fairfax County. So we have that program right at our area agency on aging in Fairfax. Yeah, that's a tough name. They should have come up with something a little bit yes. more simple. Everything's a mouthful, you know, when you're. <laughs> yeah. So when you say older adult, you know, in my world, it's 65 and older, and that's and that's actually an arbitrary number for someone mm -hmm. being considered an older adult. Um, so how how would someone be? eligible for this? Is there an age cutoff? You know, kind of who are the people that you guys serve? It varies according to the program. Some of the programs say 60 and above. Um, there are some housing facilities, for example, uh, subsidized housing facilities that may say age 62 and above. Uh, our 50 plus plan is for age 50 and above because we're also considering caregivers and caregivers tend to be in their 50s and 60s care caring for an older adult who is older. Um, so it does vary tremendously. Well, 50 is a new 30. <laughs> well, that's right. And you know AARP sends you a notice when you're 50, so that's, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's where they go from. Yeah. yeah. So you've talked about a lot of different um, programs, and coming up we're going to talk about um, Meals on Wheels and a program called Grand Involve and some transportation services. Mm -hmm. Is there another um, program that you would really like to highlight? Uh, we are very blessed in, the, at, in Fairfax to have a partnership program, a public-private partnership that's part of our Area Agency on Aging, and it's called ElderLink. And it was started back in the early 19, I guess it was 1992. So it's a partnership between the Area Agency on Aging and Inova Health System. Mm -hmm. So the employees of Elderlink are actually Inova employees, but they're housed with us at the Area Agency on Aging. And they manage some of the programs that we have, uh, particularly our caregiver programs. So they have a, a caregiver respite program uh, that they offer through the Area Agency on Aging, that offers six hours a week of respite to people who are, are a full-time caregiver for someone who needs care 
uh, 24 hours a day. So six hours a week, and actually we've gotten a grant, so they've been able to add a few more hours onto that. They have a volunteer respite program where they've trained volunteers to, to stay with someone, primarily someone with dementia, so mm -hmm. they can do social activities with them uh, and really have a very good time while the caregiver gets to go out and go to the grocery store, or go to a movie, or do something to give them a little bit of a break. So that's a wonderful program. And they actually have health and wellness programs as well. The Chronic Disease Self-Management Program is an evidence-based program out of Stanford, and they administer that. And it's a six-week series of classes to help people manage their own health. And they have an independent living program to help in fall prevention. So it's, it's wonderful that we have that flexibility to have ElderLink with us and being able to provide those extra programs that the, the county employees alone cannot provide. So that's so wonderful that we can do that. So helps to connect people to those, or they actually provide the service. They actually provide the service, uh, often with a contract. For example, okay. they, we have a home health agencies, a, a couple of them that contract with us to provide in-home care for that respite or bathing program, so, you know, something like that. So okay. that's a wonderful, a wonderful program that we offer. So if someone wanted to, to kind of get an idea of all the different things that you have, what's the, that one number that they can call? Because I think it's great that you just have kind of one-stop shopping and there's someone there to point you in the right direction. So. Exactly. And it's that mouthful. It's Aging Disability and Caregiver Resources. But it says, it's all, it, says it all. It's for, people, for older adults, caregivers, and people with disabilities. And it's 703-324-7948. And you actually get a live person. You on get the a other live side. person. It's a it's a must answer line. So as long as it's between eight in the morning and four thirty in the afternoon, you get a live person. Okay. Otherwise, they'll call you back. Okay, and that's Monday through Friday. Right, and our website is always available too to get um, more information about the various services we offer. Okay, and that's fairfaxcounty.gov slash older, older adults. adults. Very good. Right. Well, uh, thank you very much for um, sharing all that information with us. And um, I think it's great that the Area Agency on Aging does have so many different programs and that involves the community in creating a plan. Uh -huh. And so I thank this you very much for being gov. with us. And we will be back in just a few minutes to talk with Carolyn Thomas and the volunteer solutions that they have. Sounds great. So thank you very much for being here tonight. You're very welcome. So, so we'll be right back um, to talk with Carolyn Thomas and the Volunteer Ser Solutions. This is firstgov.gov, where we're obsessed with getting you government information. Brand new student loan applications on the site, baby. This calls for a celebration. Here's your uncle. So in the end, it was either take the astronaut gig or come work here. What can I say? Duty called. Dude, that's my cop. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure that's Sam's cop. Oh, sorry? Yeah. No. Sam's? No. Just log no. on or email us Thank and you. get right. what you need. C, change of address form. That's how it's done. D, driver's license renewal. Oh. E, uh, uh, e, emailing social security information. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, allow it. All right. Yeah. What are those? Government surplus cars for auction. You posted those online last time. No, you did. I'm posting them online this time. For all your government information, firstgov.gov. Oh, what have we got here? Sometimes you feel tired. You can't seem to lose those extra pounds off your midsection. And your joints hurt when you take the stairs. Well, you're getting older. But I'm happy to say that there's some simple things we can do to keep you happy and healthy for years to come. We can also lower your risk for some serious diseases the older population is often subject to. Proper nutrition is more important than ever. Your body has changed, you know. Not as many treats. A basic exercise plan, lots of walks and fresh air, and most importantly, come and see me for twice yearly checkups to help ensure the best possible quality of life. Now, how does that sound? <laughs> oh, good. good boy. Improve the quality of life for your elderly pet. Schedule twice yearly checkups that include preventive care and regular lab work. 
the message from the veterinary members of the American Animal Hospital Association. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. Good evening. I'm Melissa Bachelor Burphy, and welcome back to the Inside Scoop. Um, tonight we're talking about volunteering and how it's good for the heart. And joining me now is Ms. Carolyn Thomas, and she is the Regional Volunteer Manager for Volunteer Solutions. So thank you very much for being here with us this evening. Thank you for having me. Great. And so you have some, a lot of different opportunities for people to become involved and to volunteer. And so maybe you can just begin by telling us about your programs. The Volunteer Solutions Program covers Fairfax County, Fairfax City, and Falls Church. We deal with people who are 60 and over, and adults over 18 who have a disability. We cover that particular age range. Fairfax uh, Volunteer Solutions have volunteers that do various tasks. They do a lot of grocery shopping, they do banking for people, the money management assistant. Mm -hmm. They take people to the bank for to do their finances and they do a lot of social visiting also. The Meals on Wheels program for volunteers is the one of the largest programs and out of that program we have approximately over 1,035 volunteers right now and it's steadily wow. growing. It is constantly growing. And the Meals on Wheels program for Volunteer Solutions, there is a great need for that program. Great need for volunteers and probably a great need in the community for connecting to the services. Exactly. We have approximately 500 clients right now who need Meals on Wheels, and we have people who do call in for Meals on Wheels at the Meals on Wheels intake line at 703-324-5409. For Volunteer Solutions, if you want to be a volunteer, mm -hmm. you can call the intake line at 703-324-5406. So let's talk about those two groups of people. So if I were a caregiver at home and I thought maybe one of my family members or a neighbor might need Meals on Wheels, what, would, what are the, some of the criteria um, that I could just know about um, to know to call you? you for, to need Meals on Wheels, as I mentioned, the age range, but you also need to be unable to go out and get your food pretty much homebound. Okay. And also there should not be a caregiver in the home okay. to be able to prepare your meals. So that is one of the criteria that you can think of in calling the intake line for Meals on Wheels before you call them that you know you're you're, you're meeting those guidelines. Okay, so basically as older adults, as you're helping them to maintain independence in their home, you know, you're help, helping to bring nutrition to, to them. Exactly. And um, so as a volunteer, what type of volunteers are you looking for? Well, we're looking for volunteers who are enthusiastic and who are adults. Okay, so over 18. Over 18. <laughs> or technically. <laughs> who are adults. And when you come in for Volunteer Solutions, you have to go through a one-hour orientation. Okay. And you also have to get a background check before you can begin volunteering. And after your volunteering background check is done, then you are matched with whatever tasks that you want to volunteer for. So if you're a volunteer for Meals on Wheels, then there are coordinators in Meals on Wheels. Mm -hmm who are also volunteers, and they do a tremendous job in coordinating through all the regions in Fairfax County and Falls Church City and Fairfax City. It's a very large program for them to coordinate the routes where the volunteers have to go. The meals are prepared. Uh, they're nutritious meals, freshly prepared, and they're delivered throughout all of the regions. Mm -hmm. And you have to go to your route site between 10 and 10.30, and you will have approximately maybe 10 people or 12 people on your list. And the volunteers have a route book 
that is very clear and the directions of how to get to where you need to go. Meals on Wheels and volunteering is powerful in that connection. That connection is so powerful. Those people who are isolated are able to not be isolated anymore. Mm -hmm. And the volunteers in return get something from that of them giving to them and helping them. I got information from one of the volunteers who's been doing Meals on Wheels for 10 years now and he said he likes to help people and when he's away he misses those people mm -hmm. and when he comes back the reason why he said he likes to help them is because they are so grateful. They're so grateful that they have taken their free time to come and volunteer and deliver those nutritious meals to them. The meals are delivered on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. Mm -hmm. They are fast frozen foods. So a volunteer who maybe volunteer on a Monday, will the person will get the Tuesday meal also. Okay, so, so they get you, two days at the time. So if you volunteer on a Wednesday, then you get Wednesday, Thursday meal. So then their week is covered. Their week is covered. Okay. Their week is covered. So I'm thinking of two things. One is um, for the volunteers, you know, one of the things that we've talked about, if it, you know, volunteering is good for your heart, you know, that people have reported having less pain, less depression, it in increases your own physical activity and kind of gives you a sense of purpose. So um, those are things that we know are good about volunteering, but are you seeing that in some of the volunteers that you've talked with? I want to say a, a quote from one of my volunteers now, and he says, I know that many people face very challenging situations in their lives. To deliver meals each week for just a couple of hours may seem like a small thing, but doing this can impact the lives of those we are delivering to so greatly. Mm -hmm. And he, this helps him also put his life in perspective that he doesn't face those challenges, but he's able to help someone who's facing those challenges. It's a win-win, and he's happy. He's yes. happy. The person receiving the meal is happy. Everybody's happy. Yes. Well, and um, well fed. And I study meal times for a living, so anytime we're talking about food, that's good for me. Um, do you have some other stories, or is that what's the only good one? I have another, another story the volunteer herself is a coordinator. Mm -hmm. And I asked her how did she get started in volunteering. She said her father was a Meals on Wheels driver. And she was a sociology major at the time and she needed to do a presentation. And she was able to get permission to go along with her father to learn what a typical Meals on Wheels route is like. And she did that presentation and she said she will never forget it. And now she's the Meals on Wheels coordinator for one of the regions. Right. So even if you are not 18, if you partner with someone who is over the age of 18, you can kind of volunteer together and deliver the meals. We do have people from one of our corporations that actually the staff has been approved to deliver meals on Fridays and they do buddy up in going out and it's easier. They seem to spend about a maximum time of two hours and but they move through quickly when you got somebody with you mm -hmm. and everybody is just so happy and also our volunteers are our eyes and ears. Yes. So if anything happens, sometimes the volunteers know things before any of the case managers know. Right, and that's, I think, one benefit for, um, as healthcare providers in this community, to see kind of how the volunteers and the Area Agency on Aging can work together to kind of keep an eye on older adults um, and even maybe pick up on things sooner to kind of prevent people ended up being, being in the hospital, prevent them going into the nursing home setting, so that eyes and ears piece, you know, is a crucial piece. It definitely is. I'd like to say another quote from one of my other volunteers. 
He said, I primarily desire to help people, my clients add to my enjoyment, and because they are truly grateful, I'm happy that I'm serving them. So that's great. So um, how could some, if someone, beyond volunteering, are there other ways that businesses in the local community um, can help? As I mentioned before, we have corporations. We partner with corporations, partner with church groups, and they also have to go through that one hour orientation. With the partners, we're able, say for instance a corporation, instead of them coming to our office as a group, we can do outreach to them and go to their office to do the orientation. Other people who want to be volunteers can make an application online, and everybody has to make an application online and to have an orientation. That orientation is very important because when people come in, they have different viewpoints of what volunteering is and what mm -hmm. they're getting into. So we talk about that in the orientation of what they should think and how they should handle situations, how they should handle even emergency situations. Right, I mean, if you're the eyes and ears and you come into some type of situation, it's helpful to have that type of information. I can personally say I have been out on a Meals on Wheels route and it is very important. I learned from that experience myself personally that you need to be alert and be able to respond if there is some type of emergency. Yeah. So I'll tell you, um, interesting, we were out to dinner last night and we're, we were at a local business, Artie's, so I have to give a little shout out to Artie's, but we looked on their dessert menu and I knew I was going to do the show tonight and they have um, a disclaimer on their dessert menu that said for every dessert that's purchased, we will donate 25 cents to Meals on Wheels to the Fairfax Area Agency on Aging. And I thought, wow, look at there. That is such great local support. And um, when I was talking uh, with Sharon Lynn a minute ago, she said that all businesses can do that to help support if they can't you know, volunteer. So thank you very much for being here with us tonight. Thank you for and sharing, And for sharing your stories. Um, so when we come back, we will be talking about the Shepherd Center and continuing to discuss different ways that you can volunteer um, to promote your health and aging well. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a retired school psychologist and helping people was my thing. I was very independent and thought I could take care of myself. I fell and I had to have Meals on Wheels. After my stroke, when Meals on Wheels started, I was on the other end of the stick, so to speak. Meals on Wheels coming to my door as someone who's housebound, having someone check on me, assures me that I'm not forgotten. Meals on Wheels has given me a mode of freedom that I wouldn't have otherwise. We are the clients. We are the clients. We are the clients of Meals on Wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Why don't you just wash your car at home? When I wash my car, everything runs down the street and down into the storm drains. With all the chemicals and the soaps and waxes, the last thing I want to do is poison my own drinking water. At least here, it's all contained and recycled on site. That's why I also take my car in for oil changes instead of doing it myself. I might take a chance on spilling stuff. You know what the best part is? What? More time to kick back and watch the game. How far would you go to protect the planet? I want you to build an ark. Maybe there's another way. People, the flood is imminent. Is it too much to ask for a little precipitation? Go to fightglobalwarming.com to find out what you and your community can do to reduce global warming pollution. Somewhere around the world, there are men and women of the armed forces risking their lives, helping rebuild communities after natural disasters. 
collecting toys for needy children, tutoring kids in school. These are your sons and daughters who work to keep us safe, secure, and free. Dedicated men and women who put their country first. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. Welcome back to the Inside Scoop. My name is Melissa Bachelor Murphy and I'm your host this evening for the healthcare series of Inside Scoop. And tonight we're talking about volunteering and how it's good for your heart. And so with me now are Miss Tracy Stevens, who's the transportation manager for the Shepherd Center, Fairfax Burke, South County office. I love how everyone has super short titles that are so easy to remember. And Miss Lisa Carroll, who is the director or, or the program director of the Shepherd Center, Fairfax Burke. So thank you both for joining us. Thank you. And um, I think we'll start with Tracy, so that because you are a new um, kind of endeavor of the bigger Fairfax yes. Burke area, so maybe you can tell us what you're doing. Excuse me. Well, in the South County, we just started a new initiative. Um, I'm just a, basically a satellite office from the Shepherd Center of Fairfax Burke that's been around 10 years. They've been very successful. And they said, hey, why not? We need to go to Alexandria, Virginia, where you know older adults need free transportation. So they started the initiative last month. I opened up last month, and I am um, in Alexandria, Virginia, Richmond Highway. OK, so what type of transportation do you provide? Free medical transportation. So transportation to any Thank type much, of medical visit, whether it's a physical therapy appointment, a dental appointment, your primary care visit, um, anything medical. Um, you have to be um, age 50 and older, Okay. no longer driving, and live within our regional territory. Okay. So you're looking to, uh, to provide transportation, but you're also looking for people to volunteer to do that, the transporting. Absolutely. With this being a new initiative, the calls are, the phone is definitely ringing off the hook. So in order to, you know, give back to the community, our volunteers is really what makes this program successful. So I'm looking for volunteer drivers that just want to give back to the community, that want to kind of help a neighbor out, that, you know, doesn't mind just um, being maybe a, a social friend to someone just for maybe a couple hours or so. So I'm looking for volunteer drivers that maybe are uh, retirees, stay-at-home moms, um, anyone that definitely just has a few hours of time that they can give back maybe once a week, once a month, um, whatever you have, we'll take it. Okay, so the volunteers can be much younger. They don't have to be over a certain age group. I would say we're looking for volunteer drivers that are responsible. They have their own personal transportation. They have insurance. Uh, we do a background check as well. Um, so, you know, even college age students, I know high school students, but we're looking for someone that's at least 18 years and older. Okay. Yes. So, so that's great. So that's kind of the start in the South County area. Yes. And so now, Lisa, maybe you can tell us the potential that um, this outreach has based on like all of these things I see that you're doing. Well, we've been around for 10 years and I think transportation is the program a lot of people know us for because it's such a high need uh, service and it's free but we also do social activities. We have continuing education classes, exercise classes, speaker luncheons, a support group for caretakers of people with dementia. Uh, we do a, a friendly visitor, friendly caller program where we come and visit with people that are homebound. So we have a lot of other things going on that someday South County may also have. Absolutely. But our transportation, I think, is our largest volunteer, uh, uses the largest amount of volunteers. And we have an office team that answers the phone. And tw it's about 20 people who come in and, and talk to the drivers. And they take the calls from our you know the seniors who who request rides 
and then we have about 65 drivers. Last year we did over 2,000 rides. Wow. And our um, geographic area covers central Fairfax County, Fairfax City, and all of Burke. And there are five other Shepherd Centers in the area. We're all separate uh, nonprofits, and we all have geographic areas, so we don't overlap with each other. We're, we're very respectful of those borders. And we know that if someone calls and they're not in our area, we give them the number of, of the other uh, Shepherd Center, and uh, other Shepherd Centers, I should say. Uh, so we're very, we're very proud of what we've done in South County because it was two years in the making, and we're so glad we have Tracy uh, there to, you know, manage that office. We just are getting started and need yes. lots of drivers. Yes. It's, you always need more drivers. Yes. It's all the people that have been on the show tonight would probably tell you you never yeah. have enough drivers. Never. Right. But uh, we're very fortunate, though, that we have some wonderful, wonderful people. They, they're all wonderful. So. Um, so is there a minimum or a maximum amount of volunteering you can do, or can you kind of say, I'm available for this much time each week and would love to help out? We're very flexible. We have a wonderful uh, computer system that allows us to put in somebody once a month. We have, we have uh, people who, who might work full time, but their companies give them a little time off to volunteer and they may only get that one day a month, and so we work them into our schedule. Uh, and, or we have people who just seem to get so much joy out of it that they, they, they're, they're available almost every yeah. day of the week. And they love it, and they, they love it. They lo it, it is a, a uh, you know, volunteering from the heart, it's true. They just get so much out of it, meeting the people and knowing they're helping them and making a new friend and, and knowing that they're uh, getting to the doctor. I mean, so they're staying healthy and living independently longer. So it's a very rewarding yeah. uh, volunteer. Uh, volu if you're looking for something that really gives you a great feeling, it's volunteer at a Shepherd Center, especially our Shepherd Center. Yeah. <laughs> or South County. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. So <laughs> either one. <laughs> yeah. So South County is kind of starting with transportation and yes. then what would it what will it take to kind of get them to where they're doing like lunch and life and adventures and learning and <laughs> wow. Wednesdays at the movies and accompanied well they're already doing the medical transportation, but companion shopping, having a caregiver support group. So is it more volunteers to, to do that? It, it would probably be the size of the program and also sort of the needs of the people in Absolutely. the area if they sp expressed yeah. the interest in it. Okay. Um, you want to be offering something that you, you're sure that people will enjoy yes. and that's what they are, you know, uh, looking forward to. And I, I don't think it'll be forever that no. we no. we won't but we have you know we want to do transportation first right. and make that the focus cuz that's really important yeah. i can see and us um, providing companion shopping soon a lot of people call and say you know are you taking people to the grocery store to get their hair done and i'm like not yet but you know very soon as soon as i increase my volunteer pool we'll get to that but right now i think we want to set the precedence that medical transportation is very important and you know that's what most people are calling for right well and if you prioritize things I, you know getting them to the medical appointment so they can stay healthy so they can still go to the grocery store and get their Absolutely. hair done you know so i think that's a very good yeah. strategic plan for kind of doing that um, so well is there anything else about uh, any of these other programs that you'd like to share with us or any stories um, weren't you the one telling me about the heart? The lady? I would like to tell you some stories, a little stories about some of our, our clients. We had one client, a, a woman who um, was having heart problems and we were taking her to the cardiologist. And she found out she needed a heart transplant, a very serious operation. And uh, she did get her heart and she was able to get well and uh, she had started to drive herself again. 
So nice. she, she was so, so appreciative yeah. of that because it was so serious. And I don't think in the beginning when she was going to the doctor, she knew exactly what was happening to her. So it was more than just <laughs> yeah. a, a good thing for your emotional heart, but literally for Right, her I was gonna heart. say, this is, that brings home the volunteering is good for your heart. Yes. And it's good for a volunteer to yes. come by. <laughs> right. We have, yes. I have another, uh, just a quick story about a, a gentleman who is going to be turning 100 this year, but three years ago, he broke his wow. arm playing golf at 97 and he had to stop driving and he came to us and we we drove him until his arm healed and then he's back to driving <laughs> and I know he's turning 100 and he's still driving but occasionally he does ask us for help if he has a doctor's appointment and they've said yeah. you know maybe his eyes are dilated or something where he can't drive mm -hmm. you know and we will will take him but so they don't, you don't have to require continuous service. You could call and kind of have if, intermittent. If, if you have a medical reason that you can't drive, um, you might have a hip mm -hmm. replaced or a knee replaced, or your doctor might say yeah. you can't drive for the next five weeks. Uh, we will do that on a, on a, you know, a short-term basis. But most people are anxious to get back to their own independence and driving so right know, I mean, we help them we help them get there <laughs> right and so I think it's a perfect bridge you know that you don't that you can just need short-term services yes. for some medical reason and you're kind of like the rehab the transportation yes. rehab group you know <laughs> I like that <laughs> yeah we'll get you back on your your own feet which also helps promote independence and keeps people out of nursing homes and, yes. and things like that so um, so that's great. Aging in place gracefully, as, as I call it, yeah. Yes. Oh, and, and just so people know if they want to, you know, sign up for South County or our Shepherd Center, um, they just call us and we uh, enroll people over the age of 50 who live in our area and are currently not driving. It, and it can be short term or permanently and uh, we do not income qualify. We take, you know, everyone so that meets those, they, they just need to live in our area. Yes. And our number is 703-323-4788. And my number is 703-799-0505. So either, either place, call, um, you can volunteer with those numbers or you, yes. can, you can also enroll in the program and uh, we, we're happy to have both. Yes. Well, thank you for uh, making the one-stop shopping so yes. easy. <laughs> and um, so that concludes our time together. Thank you both very much for being here and for thank sharing you, your Melissa. stories. And we will be right back. Saving for retirement might be easy for some folks, but for others, it might take a little more work. And for those who haven't started, there are still things you can do to catch up. Like getting out from underneath past debt. And don't get wrapped up with high interest credit cards. Let's get you some eyes. Be diversified with your investments. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Your financial goals are not out of reach. The choice is clear. For a happy ending, choose to save. Everyone with alcohol and drug addiction is in the same boat. With treatment, you can find solid ground. For drug and alcohol information and treatment referral for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Dude, are you sure you want this tattoo? Because, just do it! Some mistakes in life are permanent. Like hearing loss. To learn how to protect your hearing, visit asha.org. 
You've probably heard about heart disease, but did you know that it's the number one killer of women nationwide? Heart disease claims more lives each year than breast cancer, lung cancer, or strokes combined. But there are steps you can take to protect yourself against it. For more information on how you can prevent heart disease, contact your local American Heart Association or visit their website at www.americanheart.org. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. Welcome back to the Inside Scoop. I'm Melissa Bachelor Murphy, your guest or your host for, for the evening. And we are talking about volunteering and how it's good for your heart. And joining me now is Miss Dorothy Keenan. And you are in, you are coordinating volunteers for a program called Grand Involve. That's right. So maybe you can tell us what Grand Involve is all about. Okay. Well, Grand Involve is one of the Fairfax County's 50 plus initiatives, um, which means that it's a community project that is um, sanctioned by the county for the supervisors. And we have, um, uh, we started about three years ago, that we're in our third year now, and the, uh, the goal of Grand Involve is to bring older volunteers back into the classrooms volunteering with the teachers as many of us did when our own children were little and we're hoping to bring older volunteers back into the classrooms especially in the county's um, title one schools okay um, so are there particular schools that you're targeting we're targeting the title one schools and there are about 40 title one schools in the county right now this year and um, it, it varies from year to year. But the Title I school is a school that has 40% of the students who uh, require a free or reduced price lunch. So these are the schools that have the children with the most need. And they also, in Fairfax County, are the schools that, ha that are the most culturally diverse. So that's why we chose the Title I schools, because uh, we're hoping to not only have an intergenerational program, but to also foster a better understanding of the cultural diversity that's in our county. Right. I mean, really, I think that's, those are the two things that really make your program unique, that it's you know, intergenerational and intercultural. So yes. that is really great. And one of the things um, that, I'm, that I'm really excited about also is that in thinking about getting younger um, kids to go into caring for older adults as they age and to go into kind of a healthcare career, um, most people that end up doing that have had a very positive experience with an older adult when they were young. Yes, in fact, I myself um, started when I was 12 volunteering in a, a nursing home and that's what brought me into my career and I worked with older people my whole life now. So um, you're right, but it, uh, one of the benefits of an intergenerational program is that it does reduce ageism and mm -hmm. children have a better understanding of older people. Right, a, a better positive, positive understanding. understanding. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. I think the negative part we get, you know, a lot. So it's good to kind of help reverse some of those stereotypes. Mm -hmm. And it's great for the seniors also who are involved. So, so if I wanted to get involved, um, how would I contact your program? Well, um, contact us through email, grandinvolve at gmail .com. And um, just send us a note saying you're interested in um, being involved in Grand Involve, and I can help steer you to one of the Grand Involve um, schools that are all, we are already involved in six schools in Fairfax County. And those schools are, are dispersed pretty evenly across the county, so we'll be able to, um, to direct you to one of the schools. Um, or you might be interested in working with one of our action teams. And that is a, um, a group of about 15 volunteers that are working to help plan um, the future of Grand Involve and work with the schools to ensure that each school has their goals being reached through the Grand Involve program. So the action teams help to plan, like implementing the program in new schools or the schools that are there helping them to grow? Both. Both. We have okay. action teams at each school that work with the uh, staff there to determine um, uh, whether the schools are reaching the goals that they are hoping to reach. 
And then we also have a future planning team that's looking toward the future of Grand Involve because we do hope that within 10 years, we are at all of the Title I schools in Fairfax County. So right now we have 100 volunteers, in, as I said, in our third year, and that is at six schools. So we're looking to expand very rapidly, and the future planning team is helping us um, make decisions about how to expand rapidly. So would I need a special skill set if I wanted to volunteer? No, um, especially in the, um, in the um, classrooms, there is no skill set that's, that's needed. The teacher will tell you what you need to do. And um, each teacher will have, a, um, have de predetermined before you r arrive as to what she can use help with with the students. So you generally work with a small group of children um, either an individual child or a small group of children doing play, playing a game with them or reinforcing a lesson that the teacher has just taught and um, and you, that's that's how you work in the classroom so there's no skill set involved in that um, our future um, action team volunteers um, yes we have people who have you know who have worked in business and who have experience with finances and that's very helpful for us you know in helping us to make future plans but you do not need to have a special skill set perfect so if you if you like working with children I love to have to love children yeah <laughs> but I think that's more of what I meant <laughs> Um, you know, and then being willing to work with a particular individual teacher in an individual classroom. Mm -hmm. And the teachers also agreed to be part of this program. So from year to year, we're seeing the number of teachers um, growing, of the teachers that want to be involved as they hear the good things about um, Grand Involved when the other teachers talk about it, and then they say, well, I want to have that program too, so. Yeah, it's, yes. a, it's a great thing. So now you have brought some pictures, mm -hmm. and so maybe we can look at um, some of the pictures and some of your volunteers. This is a volunteer that's, um, that's working with a group of students, and she's, um, she's working on um, reading. Okay, now which one, which picture? The middle one. Top one, okay. Um, they're doing a craft, the, uh, the, the children, and this is a preschool class, and they're working on a craft. And, um, you know, some of these children don't even know how to hold a pencil. So our volunteers are um, badly needed in the, the classrooms, just bringing the children um, kindergarten readiness. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the next picture. I yeah. can relate to it. Okay, the well, um, obviously some bonds are forming, you know, between the volunteer and the student. And uh, when, when, um, when our volunteers walk into the school, the children, you know, are all excited. Maybe that volunteer is coming to my classroom today. And um, the, the teachers often report that the children are squabbling over, you know, whose turn is it going to be today? So when I volunteer, sometimes the children make up their own rules about the games that we're playing to see if we can last a little bit longer before they have to go back into the classroom. Yeah. So if you're in the business of liking to be a, a rock star in the elementary schools, this is a good place to absolutely, start. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And the children are so interested in, in you and asking all kinds of personal questions and they are just fascinated by older adults. So it's very interesting. And you can go back for a long time because you have a longer history to tell too, right? <laughs> That's right, they're very interested. Children love to hear stories. <laughs> and so the next picture here looks, um, uh, okay, um, helping, a, uh, helping children with a project that they're working on. And you can see that we do have men volunteers and we are very happy to have some men that are willing to work with the children and they have a special place um, with, the, with the children that just love to have the men come in. Mm -hmm. um, so that's great. And then there was just one more, uh, it looks like the, the last there, she's helping with reading. Yes, that's a, a reading group. So we help with, um, with reading and with math and kindergarten readiness. Sometimes we help the teacher with a, a specific lesson. After the teacher uh, teaches the lesson, we go from child to child to make sure they understand what the lesson was about. Um, or we may be helping the, uh, the teacher prepare um, materials for a lesson that she has planned in the future. So there are a multitude of things that you can do. And um, if you want to volunteer with Grand Involved, just let the 
uh, coordinator at the school know what you'd be interested in doing and they will make sure that you have the type of volunteer experience that you're interested in. So even if you wanted to work in the library, yes, yes, that would be an acceptable volunteer experience too. So they email you and then you direct them to the coordinator within the school. That's right. And mm -hmm. then is there a minimum or maximum number of hours that I have to volunteer? Or? Well, what's good about Grand Involve is that we pride ourselves on flexibility. So we tell volunteers, and many boomer age volunteers are taking off in the winter time. So, you know, the month of February, a lot of volunteers are gone. And that's perfectly all right. The school's willing to work with our schedule. If you want to work once every other week or if you want to work once a week, most of our volunteers, once they get to the school, would like to stay for an hour or two or three um, to make worthwhile the trip back and forth because a lot of our volunteers don't live in the same geographical area as the school that they volunteer at. Okay. So, so And one other thing I should say that um, you do have to go through a background check and the school takes care of that. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, the, and that's true if, for even if you're a parent volunteering. So, one, that's right. One mm -hmm. of the things you had mentioned was, you know, with Grand involved, that it kind of fills the void where maybe not as many parents these days are are able to take off of work. That's to right. Especially in our Title I schools, um, the, the many of those parents are working two, maybe three jobs, mm -hmm. and it's unlikely that they're going to have time to volunteer in the schools. So um, having older volunteers come into the schools is bringing you back the, to the schools to the way they used to be. Used to be a lot of you know, parent volunteers, and now with more and more parents working, that's not true. And um, in many of our Title I schools, the, one of the goals of the school will be to, um, to have the parents be involved in the school. Mm -hmm. And this is a good way to show children that older adults are interested in their education and value, uh, value their education. In fact, in one of our schools, the, um, the principal has told us that as the number of grand involved volunteers has grown, so have the number of parent volunteers mm -hmm. because the parents are seeing the grand involved volunteers there and they're saying, well, I, I can volunteer too, you know. So he has seen an increase in um, both types of volunteers, grand involved and parent volunteers. And what does an after-school program? Too, we do have mentioned? we do offer some after-school programs. Again, if the school is interested in doing something after school, then we will provide an after-school program. And right now, in um, one of the schools, Crestwood Elementary in Springfield, we've got uh, a knitting program going on with 60 children involved. Wow! After school. Well, that is great. <laughs> um, I probably need to take that class myself. <laughs> me too. Yes. So well, thank you very much for being with me, Dorothy. Again, um, you can email her at grandinvolve at gmail.com to get involved with this. And thank you for joining us tonight as we talked about volunteering. I hope you'll take the time to get involved and to volunteer in our community to help both the young and the old. So thank you very much.